that season. Everything under the sun. It is time now to forget about yourself. And concentrate on him. It is a season to forget about yourself. And concentrate on him. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is time to turn yourself from the top. It is time to abandon all thoughts about problems that you are going through. Because he is a deliverer. It is time to focus. Worship Him yeah. in spirit and in truth. Man. It is time to do that. It is time to listen as the Lord sends us a message from heaven. Yeah. It is time for that. It is not time to take a nap. Yeah. Not time to sleep or slumber. It is time to listen, to see what thus saith the Lord. God has a message for all of us, including the one that He's going to use to deliver the message. Many times you don't realize that the preached word is also for the preacher. Many times the preacher gets more out of the preached word than those that he is preaching to. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this day. This is Thanksgiving season. Amen. And some of you, once we announce the text and the subject, may be wondering why isn't Reverend preaching the Thanksgiving message today? Lord didn't give me a Thanksgiving message to preach today. Yeah. Guess what? <coughs> he wants you to come out on Wednesday yeah. at 6 o'clock p.m. and listen to the Thanksgiving message that he's going to give to Reverend Smith to share yeah. with us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He wants me to let you know today that there is security. Yes, that you have security in the one whom you love and worship yes. in spirit and in truth. <coughs> let us stand for the reading and hearing of the word of God. Coming from the 10th chapter of John, verses 26. Through, excuse me, 27 through 30. John 10, 27 through 30. Let us read it together. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I am my Father, our one. The Lord have a blessing to the reading here before the words of the Our subject for today is Doctrine of Perseverance of the Saints. Doctrine of perseverance of the saints, really talking about the security of the believer. Once you take a step and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior from your heart, and you are baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you have escaped. Hell as a permanent residence. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
as your Lord and Savior. Allow him to become Lord over your life. We you know that Jesus said all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. Once you accept him as Lord and Savior and allow him to be Lord over your life, surrender your life to him, then you have become victorious over death. And you will not spend eternity in a bottomless pit. You are secure. You are secure. As a believer, you have the security, not only of the Son, but also of the Father. In this text, if you read it in the Bible, you find that the text is written in red. Which means that the words were spoken by Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus said, my sheep, yeah. hear my voice. Yeah. Yeah. My sheep. It's like when he said, upon this rock I will build my church. He's taking ownership of the church that he's going to build. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, my sheep, he's taking ownership of us if we accept him as our Lord. My sheep hear my voice. When Jesus speaks to us, we hear him. Yeah. We may not obey him, but we hear him. Uh, we may ignore him. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, and my parents asked me to do something, usually the first thing I do is pretend that I didn't hear it. And my mother would say, Kenneth, did you hear me? And I said, oh, what did you say, Mama? I heard it. I was just trying to buy some time in order to do what I wanted to do. The best thing for me was to, to pretend, in order to avoid punishment, to pretend that I didn't hear her tell me to go in and wash the dishes. Mom, when did you say that? I, I didn't hear you. Well, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Says, and I know that Mama knew who she was talking to. She had 20 kids, and out of the 20, she knew exactly which one she was talking to when she called my name and told me to go in the kitchen and wash the dishes. I acted as if I didn't hear. Jesus said, and they followed me. My sheep, not only do they hear me, but when I tell them to do something, they do what I tell them to do. They follow me. And I give, I give, I give them Jesus. eternal life. Thank you. Thank you. And they shall never, because of what I gave them, they have escaped the bottomless pit. They shall never perish. Thank you. Now, here is why they shall never perish. Right. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You know, folk can come around and kidnap your kids. Yes, right. They can snatch them right out, out of your hand. You walk in the mall and someone come by, snatch up your child and run off. And they're gone with your child. You may never see your child again. Jesus said, neither shall anyone snatch them out. That's security. Yes, that's Jesus is talking about security, the security that we have once we accept him as Lord and Savior. Thank you. Thank My Father, who has given them to me, we are a gift from God to his Son. God gave us to his Son, Jesus Christ. 
And God is greater than all. He says, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. So even, it's like double security. We have the security of the Son, and we have the security of the Father. It's like walking down the road, and Jesus is holding one of our hands, and God is holding the other. And nobody, nothing, nothing created by man, or atomic bomb, or nuclear bomb, is powerful enough to take us out of the hands of God or His Son. That's security that's promised to the believer. And then he says, I and my Father are no one. The same power that my Father has to keep you, I have that same power to keep you. The doctrine of perseverance of the saints. When we accept the job, we want to know all of the benefits that are available for employees. Yeah. What about job security? What are the conditions of employment? What about tenure? Who am I supposed to report to? Can I be fired for minor transgressions? Yes, we all want job security yeah. for life and don't want anyone else hired by the company to come and take our positions with the company. Well, are 15 of the Baptist's articles of faith or doctrine of perseverance assures us that as saints of God, our positions are secure forever. Yeah, yeah. Nothing is powerful enough to extract us from the hands of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. In fact, the doctrine or the article states as follows, and I hope that they'll put it up on the screen. We believe that such only are real believers as endure to the end. That their persevering attachment to Christ is a grand mark which distinguishes them from superficial professors. That a special providence watches over their welfare and that they are kept by the power of God through faith unto eternal salvation. In our text, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Yeah, yeah. Saints, that's perseverance. Yeah. In this text, my sheep are referred to as those of us that are set apart to do the work and the will of God and will never perish. In Revelation 21, John writes, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. You can bank on these words. What as sheep of Christ or saints of God. Though the way is dark at times, and though dangers lurk on every hand, that as saints of God, we shall be preserved and shall persevere until New Jerusalem descends from the heavens. Yes. There are two terms in our text that we must consider. One, perseverance, and two, saints. The doctrine of the perseverance of saints. Let us consider first what is the perseverance of saints. In the second place, we must view its basis. How does one know that the saints shall persevere to the end? Finally, we must see the wonderful comfort in knowing this biblical truth. We will first take a look at the term saint. For us as Baptists, too many of us believe that 
saints are only members of a sanctified church. Which means that we don't consider ourselves to be a sanctified church, even though we understand that sanctification means to be set apart to do God's work and to do God's will. Yes, sometimes we get the wrong idea or understanding that a saint is a person far above all other normal people in the church, or that a saint is one who has performed a superabundance of good works and is therefore above all others to be praised. That idea comes from the Roman Catholic Church, which elevates some above others, maintaining that saints, because of their superabundance of good works, can immediately enter into heaven. But this is not the scriptural idea of a saint. According to the word of God, a saint is one who is both separated or separate and separated. A saint is one chosen by the living God from all eternity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He was no better than others, but is one who has been lifted out of the miry clay of sin and death. He is one who has been regenerated or born again, called and converted, so that now he lives in conscious union with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is separated, he has separated them from this world and is made righteous and holy by a holy father. That is a saint. I do not say he is a man without sin. I do say that he is a saint for Jesus' sake. And we confess that we are numbered among those saints. It is to those saints, though they are so imperfect on this earth, that the word of God is addressed repeatedly. The epistles are written to the saints of a certain city. There is security for all of God's saints, including his Baptist saints. I can't speak for you, but I will be in that number when the saints go marching in. If I'm not in that number, no one going to be in that number. That's the kind of security that I have. And you ought to have the same security. You need to know that you are a child of God. And when you know that you are a child of God, you know that when the saints go marching in, you are going to be in that number. Yes, that's, there's the term perseverance. By this we mean that one continues in the state of holiness and righteousness to which he has been elevated through the work of the Holy Spirit. And he continues in this state through all of his way through the valley of the shadow of death until he is brought finally to glory. Yes. Or stated differently, perseverance may be defined as that continuous operation of the Holy Spirit in the believer, by which the work of divine grace that has begun in the heart is continued and brought to completion. Yeah. It is because God never forsakes his work that believers continue to stand to the very end. Yeah. Yeah. Perseverance suggests, first of all, there will be dangers or threats to the new life mm -hmm. which one has received. This is not going to be an easy journey. It was not an easy journey for Jesus. Man. They spat on him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I was representing a client the other day. One of the generals got, got angry because she was sitting in the back seat of her car. The windows rolled down. And this guy decided he was going to spit on her. And instead of her rolling her glass up, the window up, and going and calling the police, she knew the guy. She decided she was going to get out of the car and start a fight. Because somebody spilled. I told you, did you not know that the one that gave his life for you was spat on? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, but ain't nobody going to spit on me and get away with it. And I said, that's the reason why you have to find somewhere else to live. It's because there's a policy. One strike and you're out when it comes to fighting. You fight out here, everybody comes to the fight 
and everybody gets involved in the fight and a riot breaks out. Yeah, yeah. There was no riot that broke out to defend Jesus, but he was spat on. And so I don't know why we think that once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that this journey is going to be a piece of cake. Amen. Amen. We're not going to have any more trials and tribulations. Yes. Everything is going to be a piece of cake. We're not going to get sick. We're not going to have to cry about anything. But Jesus let us know that that's why you are striving to be a saint. So that in the end, you'll be able to take the advantage of those benefits where there will be no more sitting up. No more crying and no more pain. Amen. There is security for all of God's saints, including us as Baptists. Yes, perseverance. By this we mean that one continues in a state of holiness. We continue to do that which is righteous and pleasing in the sight of God. We are told to love everybody, including our enemies, including those who slap us on one cheek. We're asked to turn the other. Yes, the Holy Spirit in the believer helps us to overcome, by which the works of divine grace that has begun in the heart is continually brought to completion. It is because God never forsakes His work that believers continue to stand to the very end. Perseverance suggests, first of all, there will be dangers or threats of new life to the new life which one has received. There is that which seeks to drag one down, to destroy us, and to take away that living faith which we confess in our words for Jesus' sake. The devil makes it absolutely clear that he came to kill. I came to kill, I came to maim, I came to devour, and I came to destroy the saints of God. I didn't come to make life easy for you. I came to make life as miserable for you as I could. And that's my job. And I'm going to do my job. Your job may be to try to escape me when I try to do these things to you. But my job is to inflict as much pain on you as I can. Now Jesus came that you might have life. And you might have it more abundant. But I, the devil, don't want you to confuse my coming with your Savior's coming. Because there's nothing you could ever do to please me. Now even if you accept everything I throw at you, it's not going to please me. Because then it just lets me know that I need to throw something more at you if I'm pleasing you. I didn't come to please you. But saints, I tell you that perseverance likewise implies that though the dangers are present on every hand, we walk safely and secure through them all until finally we receive exactly that glory which God has promised to us in Christ Jesus. There's one passage in Scripture which points out this truth clearly. As 1 Corinthians 15 and 15 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding, in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yeah. Be steadfast yeah. when Sunday morning rolls around. Be steadfast in coming to the house of the Lord to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Be immovable yeah. when the devil tries to push you off course yeah. and force you to go in a wrong direction and do things that's not pleasing in the sight of God. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always attending Sunday school so that you will know what the word of God says and what the Lord wants you to do. Knowing that your labor, your labor when you work to help somebody yeah. it is not in vain in the Lord. He promised never to leave us nor to forsake us so that when the ships of life seem to overtake us and the winds of discouragement seems to blow us off course. We can call upon him to steal the tides of life and return the winds of destruction to a peaceful state. Knowing all this, we can answer the question raised by the Apostle Paul in the 8th chapter of Romans. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? How about persecution or famine or nakedness? How about the peril or how about a sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, because it is in neither death nor life, no angels, nor principalities, nothing in cities and states and governments, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us, to separate us. That sounds like security to me. Separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. As believers and, and saints of God, the Bible assures us of the security of the believer. Nothing is powerful enough to take us out of the hands of the Lord. The doctrine of the perseverance of the saints does not maintain that all those who profess the Christian faith are certain of heaven. It is those saints who are set apart by the Spirit who persevere to the end. We can't start out on this journey. And then the next Sunday, well, I ain't going to church. I can't do this. I ain't going to Sunday school. I, I, don't, I don't need to go to Sunday school. I know it all. I, I, lucky to just get me to show up once or twice a year, at least every, every Christmas and every Thanksgiving and every Easter, I do show up. Well, what if God had that schedule with your life? What if God only showed up about two or three times in your life? What if Christ decided and God decided we're going to sleep sometime and we're going to slumber? We're not going to stay up 24-7 watching over these saints. What if God was had that kind of faithfulness when it came to your life? Amen? Amen. It is believers, those who are given true living faith in Christ and are attached, attached to the vine, who are secure and safe in Him. In order to be secure and experience the security that God gives us through His Son, we must be attached to the vine. And then Jesus lets us know that if you are attached to the vine, then you will go out from among this place and make sure that you live the kind of life wherein you will lead others to desire to become attached because they will be able to see and recognize what I'm doing for you and they know that I am no respecter of person. When I let it rain, I let it rain on the just and on the unjust. Amen? Amen. But there's something about the just there's something about the just when it rains on us. Uh, we don't come out wet. Amen. When God allows it to rain on us, the water does not affect us as it does the unjust. Amen. We come out of it knowing that all things work together for good. This rain that fell on me, it just gave me the kind of spiritual bath that I needed anyway yeah. in order to be able to handle the next cloud that falls my way. Yeah. Amen. Those of us who believe in John 3.16 are guaranteed eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him will not, not, not perish but would have, have, have everlasting life. The gift of everlasting life is given to you the minute you demonstrate your faith and belief in the Son of God. You don't have to wait until the resurrection to receive the gift. You get the gift at the moment of your faith and belief in Jesus Christ 
and you will not, you shall not perish. You have the security as a believer that God will never let you go. Guess what? If the devil could snatch you out of the hand of God, then who is more powerful, the devil or God? If the devil could pull you out of God's hand, then that means the devil is more powerful than God. And, and my, my, my Bible tells me that the devil acted like he had a little power when he was in heaven. And he got kicked out. And guess what's going to happen to you when you run around acting like you got more power than God? You're going to get kicked out. And you're going to join Satan in the bottomless pit where there will be gnawing and gnashing, gnawing and gnashing of teeth. You think you, think you can't sleep when somebody's snoring. Think about trying to sleep in hell, you to catch a nap in hell, everybody is knowing and gnashing, and the fire is turning up hotter than you've ever seen before. Many who profess to believe fall away, but they do not fall from grace, for they were never in grace. True believers who fall into temptation, however they may commit grievous sin, but these sins do not cause them to lose their salvation or separate them from Christ. Christ died for our restoration. Yes, a restored relationship with the Father. They whom God has accepted in His beloved Son, effectually called and sanctified by His Spirit, can neither totally nor finally fall away from the state of grace, but shall certainly persevere therein to the end and be eternally saved. Now, this doesn't mean that because I'm saved, I can go out there and do anything I want to do and God will forgive me. Paul said, God forbid. God forbid. God forbids that you try to do that and get away with it. Amen? If God has chosen me absolutely and unconditionally to eternal life, and if His Spirit effectively applies to them, the benefits of redemption, the inseparable conclusion, is that these persons shall be saved once and forever. God's people are given eternal life the moment they believe, and they are kept by God's power through faith, and nothing can separate them from His love. As saints of God, we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, who has been given as a guarantee of our salvation, and we are thus assured of an eternal inheritance. Perseverance of the saints is the biblical doctrine that God infallibly preserves in faith to all those He has given to His Son. John 6, 37-40 also assures us that we as saints are never lost. The text says, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Yes, these are words spoken by Christ himself, who maintains that none who are truly redeemed by him can be condemned for their sins or finally fall away from the faith. For as Apostle Paul states in Philippians 1 and 6, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring this completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Again, okay, our text, and don't forget it, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. 
and they shall never. In your Bible, you can underline, circle, never. Never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Now, if the first is true, if the first is true, never perish, then you don't ever have to worry about anybody plucking you out. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean the devil is not going to pluck at you. It doesn't mean because you have the security of God and have security of the Son that the devil is not going to try to pluck you out of their hand. But Jesus gives us the assurance that no matter how much plucking takes place, you shall not be plucked out of my hands or out of the Father's hand. I can't speak for you, but I am a saint of God because I believe in John 3.16. I am a saint of God because I have been to the river and I've been baptized. And my soul, my soul is converted. And I always feel all right. I may be sick sometimes, but my soul is converted. And I feel all right about my soul. I am saying because I've already received the gift of eternal life. And I know that there's no way that I can lose the gift of eternal life. I am a saint because on Good Friday, while Jesus was hanging there on the cross, he said, Father, forgive Kenneth. I was part of them. Forgive them. I was part of that them. Forgive them for they know not what they do. I am a saint of God because on Good Friday, Jesus died on the cross, gave up the ghost and said, Father, into my hands I commend my spirit. I'm commending it for Kenneth Gavin. I, I am a saint because Jesus stayed in the grave for three days and three nights. You can claim the same. I, I'm just claiming, I'm claiming this for me. Y'all don't mind if I get selfish. Because if he died for me, then you ought to know that he died for you. If he arose for me, you ought to know and be able to proclaim that he arose for you too. I am a saint because Jesus stayed in the grave. He stayed there for me for three days and nights. I am a saint of God because he arose early on Easter Sunday. He arose with all power in heaven and in earth. And I need him for healing. If I need him for some bread on my table, I can just ask anything in his name. I can just knock and he's there to open the doors for me. I know that I'm a saint. I know that I'm a saint because, because I'm going to persevere as a saint because Jesus left on a cloud. I know he left on a cloud. I can't speak to you, but I, I know he left on a cloud. And if he left on a cloud, he said, I'm going to come back. I'm coming back in like man. And I'm a saint because I know that he's coming back the same way he left. And when he left, he said, I'm going to go away, kids, and I'm going to prepare a place for you in my father's house of many mansions. And I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And I'm not going to just waste my time in my father's house preparing a place for you that you will never be able to occupy. I'm going to come back and I'm going to receive you, Kenneth, unto myself so that wherever I am, there ye may be also. I am going to persevere as a saint because nothing is power enough to pluck me out of the hands of God. Nothing is powerful to pluck me out of the hands of Jesus Christ. I'm going to persevere as a saint because I'm going to endure until the end. Can I get a witness? Are you holding on to God's unchanging hand? Hold on and see what the end will be. At the end, there will be no more suffering. 
No more heartaches and pains. No more operations. No more cancer. No more crying. No more death and dying. I'm just looking forward to the benefit package. It goes with the gift of eternal life. I'm going to get to open up the package one day. And when I open up the, the gift of eternal life, I'll look inside and I'll see nothing but joy. When I open it up, I'll see nothing but peace, nothing but love, nothing but happiness. Everybody getting along with everybody. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that day. There will be nothing but peace. saint of God, I can reach out to my Lord and my Savior. Yeah, yeah. And I can say, precious Lord, right. take my hand. Oh, yeah. And lead me. And lead me on. Saints, we need the leadership yeah. of Christ. Amen. In order to persevere, you need to be a saint. Saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I guarantee you that you will never be lost. I can't guarantee you you're not going to have trials and tribulations because Jesus guaranteed us that we would. But he said, Be of good courage. Be of good courage when the trials and your tribulations come. Think about what I went through. Think about how they nailed me to the cross. Think about how they pierced me in my side. When your trials and tribulations come, be of good courage because you know that early on Easter Sunday morning, I overcame everything that they threw at me. And I'm here for you to make sure that you too will overcome everything that the devil throws at you because you are my sheep and as my sheep you hear my voice and when you hear my voice you listen you listen you listen and you obey those that obey